Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the 12th week of WeeklyPokerHand.com, where today I'm going to be going over one of my hands. This is from a $50 buy-in online tournament. Here I raised to 600. You can't see the number because my cards are in the way. Sorry about that. I raised to 600 with pocket threes from the cutoff out of my 10,000 chip stack. And the big blind, who is very deep, calls. It comes queen, queen, three, and at this point we obviously have the nuts. We are not concerned with anything. Um, and he bets a thousand into us on queen, queen, three, two hearts. So at this point I think he either has a queen, a flush draw, or one of those middle type pairs like four to jacks. Although he probably three bet like jacks and tens and nines. So he probably has like eights through fours, um, or a flush draw, all of which are drawing pretty much stone dead. So seeing how the the size of the pot, if I call, is going to be 3,300. If he bets the turn, I, it's going to be pretty easy for me to get it all in by the river. So this is one of those rare spots where I do recommend a slow play. He bets 600 on the turn. Again, this makes me think that he has either a flush draw, which we crush, or he has um, one of those small to medium pairs. So when he bets here again, I'm just going to call. I don't really think there's too much value in raising. Again, notice here if I call, there will be 4,500 in the pot, and then if he bets the river, I can easily go all in. So, I like a call here. I think that's a pretty good play. River's a jack, which is effectively a blank again, and he bets 1,400. And at this point, I don't really think he has one of those small pairs anymore. I think he'd probably check those. Because to him, my range has to look fairly strong here. Either I guess he doesn't think I have a queen, because he probably would assume I'd raise with a queen at some point, or better. So he probably doesn't think I have a hand quite as strong as I have. But at the same time, this sort of looks like a value bet. Um, it looks like he's trying to get value out of whatever he thinks I may have. So if he's trying to get value, it means he has a queen for the most part. So if he has um, ace-queen, king-queen, or queen-ten, we're going to stack him. If he has queen-jack or queen-nine, we're going to get stacked. I don't really think he's ever folding any queen if I shove here, seeing how all the flush draws bricked off. So I think the right play here is to just go all in, and that is exactly what I do. So the board's queen, queen, three, jack, nine. He bet 1,400 on the river into 4,500, and I go all in for 7,300 total. And I think this is going to be a pretty good all in. I don't really see my opponent getting away from any queen. This is a spot on the river where a lot of amateur players will like min raise here. And actually, if you min-raise here and your opponent then shoves, it's a pretty bad spot where you should consider folding your full house, which is obviously absurd, um, because your opponent will probably only shove with full houses, and obviously we have the worst full house. So I think a shove here is going to be good. We're going to get the same amount of value out of the big hands, and we are just never, ever, ever going to get bluffed, which is very good whenever you have a hand that is effectively a bluff catcher at this point if he, we min-raise and he shoves. So, I like this play. We're not really trying to get value out of, like, pocket fours, because notice if he has fours, he's going to fold to any raise. So we do throw out a pretty big raise, and all in. And he does call, and he actually has king-10 for the back door straight. And this is a hand that I didn't really even consider, <laughs> because um, it's just so rare that this is actually going to be there. But he did have the straight, and this is a pretty gross spot for him, because in order for me to have the best hand, I had to just pretty much stone slow play a monster the whole way, and that's exactly what I did. And whenever your opponent is drawing very near dead, which he was with a flush draw on the flop, it's never really that bad to slow play. So, um, in the next part of this episode, I'm going to take a look at this hand from my opponent's point of view and see if there was any possible way he could have gotten away from this hand. So, check it out in part two. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.